Welcome back to another edition of the Pitch Part and Puff Podcast. My name is Roger, a.k.a. RGB. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Before we get into our guest tonight, i got to give a quick shout-out to a couple sponsors here. Uh, first, we're going to go with GolferCBD.com. Make sure you guys check out GolferCBD.com. Use promo code PPP10 to save yourself 10% at checkout. They have a bunch of different options to offer. They have the topicals, the recovery cream, and the performance cream. Uh, they also have the gummies, the performance spray. So definitely go and check them out, um, GolferCBD.com. So the topicals are really their big thing right now. Um, I've been using the performance cream and the recovery cream lately, and it's, it's been working wonders. Uh, it's truly a game changer with the patent delivery technology. They are strokes ahead of the competition, delivering 10 times more CBD <clears throat> excuse me, directly to the muscles, joints, than the traditional bombs and other creams. The Golfer CBD topicals are easily to, easy to apply on the course, absorb quickly, and do not leave any sticky residue, making them a perfect addition to every golfer's golf bag. So make sure you throw them in the golf bag. Um, you definitely find it beneficial out there on the golf course, the gummies as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Steve and Hank are big fans of the gummies. Uh, notice, their, notice their focus is a little bit better out there when they take the gummy, gummies prior to the round. So check them out. Promo code PPP10 to save yourself 10% at checkout. Also, check out 420 Bliss, located at 740 Hoosick Road, right in Walmart Plaza here in Troy, New York. Uh, check them out online at 420-bliss.com. And they also have a new app. You can go just a little higher. Uh, make sure you choose the 420 Bliss location. Uh, you can do everything right there. You can set up your delivery service, uh, everything they have online, flower, pre-roll, edibles, tinctures, vapes, you name it, they have it. Go and check out 420 Bliss and let them know the Pitch Putt and Puff Crew sent you. And then last but not least, we got Trouble Off the T, troubleoffthetea.com, promo code RGB for 15% off. Promo code PUFF, buy one, get one free on the polos. Make sure you take advantage of that. And then you got to go check out the book, author Marty Minden, narrated by Jake Adams from Country Club Adjacent. You can find it on Spotify as well as Audible. It's a great listen. You get through it in a couple of days. Like I always tell you guys, it's that it's what you're listening to. It's that book you're listening to where you, you drive around the block a couple of times just to finish that chapter. So make sure you go check out troubleoffthetea.com. Um, before we get into it, though, going to... Uh, Gonna bring on a guest. We're gonna have Twisted Foot, Rob and Chad from Twisted Foot. Really cool uh, setup with those guys do. So we're gonna bring them on here in just a minute. Welcome back to another edition of the Pitch Putt and Puff Podcast. My name is Roger, aka RGB. Uh, I'd like to introduce our guest tonight. We got the guys from Twisted Foot. We got Rob and Chad. Welcome to the podcast, boys. What's going on, man? Thanks for having us, Rob. No, I absolutely appreciate your time. Appreciate your time. I have one of your uh, your accessories right here for the Twisted Foot. Use it on the golf cart all the time. I was just telling you guys prior, I leave it on the golf cart quite a bit as well. So I have a good connection with the, the guy who does the golf carts. So every every morning I got to call, hey, Aunt Cart 22 left my left my cartridge again. Can you go grab that for me? <laughs> so it works out. But uh, why don't you guys tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, the Twisted Foot brand? Yeah, yeah. So um, I used to be in advertising, um, but I had open heart surgery when I was 37 years old. And okay. they said, well, you can't really drink too much anymore. And I was like, what about smoking weed? And they were like, oh, that's fine. So um, <clears throat> the first thing uh, I did was, you know, I got my pipe and my lighter and um, went to go put it out and just had a hard time doing it. So then I was like, someone should invent a ring that you slide up your lighter. And we call it a lighter charm. This one's for wild. It's also a fridge magnet. <laughs> okay, yeah. And uh, maybe even a ball marker. Yep. And uh, yeah, so you can personalize, decorate your lighter however you want it. It's borosilicate, so you can snuff out your bowl. And that way it's not smoking when you're not smoking it. And that was our first patent. Uh, and then, Chad, you want to take it over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I came from I came from the military and prior service to Air Force. I, I uh, have been in the music industry uh, and finalized uh, in radio, um, you know, back after I got my degree from Arizona State. I, I got into radio here in Colorado and uh, uh, immediately got into medical marijuana. This is in 2009. And uh, it was five years before, you know, official recreational out here. So when it was medical only out here and um, I did retail for a decade um, through all of the 2014 hype and, and everything like that being, you know, one of the first markets, you know, the first market that was kind of crushing it and doing it out here in Colorado and uh, stayed in doing it for about another five years. And that's when uh, 
you know, I met, I met Rob. I was a sales manager of a chain of dispensaries here in Denver called Colorado Harvest Company. Shout out CHC. Um, and uh, yeah, man. So he can you know, he came on and uh, came into my shop and wanted me to, you know, take a look at his charms. And uh, so I kind of did, you know, I gave some of them to my, my butt tenders, just like I, you know, I had done with, you know, medicated and non-medicated products. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he, Rob being the, you know, persistent salesman that he is kind of kept following up and kept following up. And eventually it was a couple of months later, he ended up, uh, you know, coming in back in, following up just randomly one day when I ended up being in this, in one of the stores that, you know, I was managing. And, uh, you know, he asked me, he was like, uh, so what do you think about the lighter charms, man? And I was like, you know, I'm kind of interested. I've used it. It's marked my lighter and I have the same lighter, like no lighter thieves have, ta have taken mine yet. So nope. I was like, let me take a look. So at the time I had five bud tenders on that were tending that day, went through each one of them, found out that four out of the five still had their lighter charm. Uh, and, you know, one or two of them had it on a different lighter, but, you know, it had slipped from one to the next. But, you know, they still had the lighter charm with them. And, uh, you know, I, I hadn't oh. ha having come from radio and having done a ton of merch with bands and radio stations. And, man, I gave away more apparel than I think, you know, uh, a poor poor country in Africa would meet, would need, <laughs> honestly. But, uh, you know, merch is super important to be able to get your brand out. And when I nope. saw that the uh, stickability, the collectability that my butt tenders were displaying on this, you know, I kind of decided timing wise, it was great. And, you know, I liked the idea at that time, Rob already had gotten one patent and, yep, you know, just the one. Yep. And he, uh, you know, so we started kind of, we started working out on the, on the lighter charms, man. I've, you know, I've been, since I've been in the game for a while, I've, I've known a lot of the brands that, you know, were some of the OGs out here in the Denver market. Yeah. So, you know, on my podcast, while I was doing retail, I did a podcast as well. And I would have, you know, a bunch of the CEOs like Nancy Whiteman or Bob Esquino, you know, Ralph Morgan, some of the ones that, you know, kind of originated, you know, Open Vape and Incredibles and Wana and stuff. And they'd come on my, on my show and we'd talk weed. And so when I started showing them these little guys, you know, there's, a lot of little tchotchke things that had come through retail for the first decade I was in it. But, you know, the stickability and the utility of this guy was kind of unmatched. And it, it really caught my ear, dude. So, yeah. um, you know, obviously since then we've got a couple other patents, but this was the first one. <laughs> this is like literally, though, like especially with guys, you know, people hanging around smoking. Hey, right, let me get that lighter real quick. This went out. Let me get the lighter real quick. And all of a sudden, when you go to spark your next joint, you're like, where the hell did that lighter go? Oh, <laughs> I gave it to Johnny back in the, we were having the sesh back there. I'm never seeing that thing again. Now yeah. you know it's yours. Now you know yeah. it's yours. So you I know that this is my blue, blue River Terps charm, dude. My Blue <laughs> yep. River Terps charm, damn it. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, yeah. Well, and yeah. then we moved on to the, um, to the, you know, the vape charms that you have sitting, that you have right there. Uh, yep. Cure Leaf, uh, Select is one of our customers and uh, um, True Leaf, uh, their colors brand. Um, they've got the uh, colored silicone. We're really uh, seeing a lot of that now. Um, and um, yeah, it was, it's always strange, interesting about the patents because um, we were like, well, there's no way we're going to get a patent on something like that. Right. So it's a triangle shape with a magnet in it. How is that mm -hmm. possible? Well, we've got our firm is amazing. Uh, and uh, people are always like, well, you know, IP, you're going to get ripped off anyway. But I mean, we do think that it's important. And as the, you know, cannabis becomes more legitimate, those are going to become pretty important considerations. And the fact that they're so helpful for so many people, really, number one, what we want to do is make your life easier, whether you yeah. vape or smoke or you know anything like that and it's for brands and fans too yeah and, it, and let alone the marketing aspect of it like now like i know what select is but now someone could see this and ask me what select is and oh it's a you know, exactly the, the pens or whatever you know whatever they have to offer so there's definitely different the variety of options you get from that for sure um, yeah it's I've definitely had some... a win-win all overall you know the consumers yeah. really like it because they're protecting their their product you know what i mean that by keeping the, by having the magnet um, you know, you can you can store it upright. You know what I mean? So it yes. kinda, basically what I say is it keeps the oil on the coil. You know what I mean? It makes it so that the oil, the coil doesn't dry out by sitting on its side or something like that. Most thing, the biggest thing that, that used to upset me when it comes to vapes is if I had it on the side, I went to hit it. I didn't wait for the oil to cover up the whole coil. I'd hit it. You know, the, the oil would burn, the coil would burn. And then all of a sudden my, the whole flavor of my cart would be tainted. I just spent 
50 bucks or whatever on my cart, right. dude, for some live. And now I'm going to taste it's like a burnt, you know, cartridge or whatever, especially like even these new two grammars that we did for the clear. Like it's a whole lot of glass right here, dude. And so yeah. to be able to protect my, you know, 75 yeah. to a hundred dollar investment from, from dropping or anything like that, like I know yep. it's not going to break, but the cool thing, like you're saying, when it comes to the marketing aspect of it, like we've been doing, so you can see, we, we've been doing QR, QR codes, codes on yeah. one side, man. And we've been crushing it with the QR codes. Like you can track your testing on it. You can send customers to like your main page for your online ordering. Native you know, Ritz. there's a couple of companies that are in Oklahoma that actually have a playlist that you scan the, the QR code that you're supposed to listen to certain songs when you're smoking this certain strain or whatever. But oh, that's the cool. marketing aspect is silly, dude. It actually, um, a dispensary chain out here called Native Roots increased their web traffic by 600% in 30 days. Hmm. Not bad. That's not bad at all. No. That's not bad at all. These are all of our one-liners for you, man. We're throwing them all out there. <laughs> right. Get them zingers in. Absolutely. Right, right. Absolutely. Um, yeah, because, like, not even that, like, so even to put the bowl out, you got the little, you got the snuffer on the on the um, lighter thing, which mm -hmm. is perfect. And then you're protecting, so, like, I used to have a um, a battery that would flip upside down. So, like, if I had it in my pocket or something, like you were saying, oil to the coil, mine the thing would always be clogged. I'd have to get a toothpick or a golf tee or something and try to jam it in there and make something happen out of it. And I'd be sitting there trying to hit the pen. I just want to hit it quick. I'm spending more time trying to clean the thing out than I am getting a chance to hit the thing. Right. So that's that's a big factor. And the sunlight. Doesn't it? You, it's also protected from the sunlight from cooking it out if it's just sitting in your car or something like that. Yeah, dude. Yeah. People don't understand how easy yeah. it is for turps to get degraded, man. Like for real. So, like, we work with some companies in Arizona that they work all these hours to try to get their oil and their live rosin just perfected, and then they don't cover the cartridge for the for the consumer, and they're just they're in Arizona, 110 degree heat. You're already having a hard enough time making it so it doesn't leak out the cartridge, dude. But yep. while it's sitting there trying to leak and all that heat, it's actually getting degraded because the sunlight's just breaking through and totally degrading all of those terps that you work so hard at. So, yeah, that's wildness. That's absolutely, you know, it's the little things people don't think of, but like that's what you guys, you think of that little thing makes a huge, like you said, though, convenience wise, just to be able to just do this, especially like if whatever I'm doing in the car, I have the little magnet thing on my car. I set it right there. I used to put my phone on there. Now I put that there. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. <laughs> right. Focus on the seat. But then right uh, a buddy of mine, too, just dropped. He just went to the dispensary, bought a brand new cartridge, spent 40, 50 bucks or whatever it was, had it on his lap, was arguing with his girl on the phone, hops out <laughs> of the truck and drops it. So it breaks. I literally, the next day, I got, I think, literally, Rob, I think it was the next day I got talking to you. And then I was like, you know what? I think. Because I'm sponsored by 420 Bliss is a local dispensary here in uh, in upstate New York. Right. On. And so um, she gave me a little care package, and this is the blue select one was in there. And I was like, you know what? I think I have one of those. <laughs> and then I went, and I was like, yeah, I do. And I, then I started using it, like, instantly. I was like, oh, this is a great – because I honestly, at first, I didn't know what it was. Right. Like, I, I didn't know. I was like, oh, there's, like – because there was, like, a bunch of keychain things and other, like, uh, different variety of things. And I'm like, I don't, some of this stuff, I don't even know what the heck it is. I'll just give it away to the guys when they come on the podcast kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was my thought. I was like, ah, oh, they can figure out what it is. And then I seen it. I was like, this is – and I literally haven't, like, not used it since. So it, the convenience of it is definitely yeah. a, a huge factor. I love to hear huge that. Factor. That's awesome. It crashed but, me up. I talked to a lot of females, and they're like, I spent an hour looking for my vape pen. It ends up being lost in the in the couch. Or yep. it's at the bottom of their of their purse, and they all and it feels like all the other pens and shit that make up things that are down there anyway. So yeah. to be able to kind of have it mounted and put where you want to, man, even having a metallic ha having a metal coffee table in front of your TV is a game changer. Like gamers mm -hmm. and stuff, just love it. So, yeah, all yeah. Right. And if you don't have one, uh, we also have these that you can mount anywhere. I see that you gave me one of those as well. In this little yep. package here, yep. So that's what I was going to ask you about that. That you just set up wherever, and it just yeah, you can mount right to it, huh? Anything that yeah. you can stick a 3M sticky note note thing to, typically, dude. Like even you know, oh, I've, oh, I've done it to cork board. Block. I've done it to yeah. you know, yeah, all sorts of things. I tell everybody I my wife has one on the back of the headboard, so she doesn't even have to get out yeah. of bed if she wakes up. She can reach around the headboard, grab her mm -hmm. grab her indica pen, hit it a couple times, and then go back. Go to right sleep, back man. to sleep. 
Yeah, Man. like the kids will be cleaning right next to the bed. They won't even know it's hanging there, dog. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. yep. and that's yeah, that's the other thing. You won't nothing about it. So, how do you guys produce these? Do you guys uh, do you guys make these? Do you have a company that makes these for you, obviously, or did you come up with the? Do you do the manufacturing yourself? Yeah, no, we have a company called Ads on Magnets. They're down in Castle Rock, Colorado. Um, who they're fantastic. Um, PPAI is the world's biggest uh, promotional products trade show. And every year they win a golden pyramid award for product quality, customer service, all of that. Mm -hmm. And we're actually the only other company that they do work for. Uh, they've been around since 1976, I believe. Um, and they're just, they're amazing people and they know everything about magnets and silicone. Yeah. Basically, if you've ever been to an Ace Hardware or a Home Depot, something like that, and there's right. all those chip clips and all the different magnetic things that you can use in your, in your garage, dude, with all your tools, most likely there's a good chance at least half of them were made by ads on magnets. Oh, and that's not one. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. They're, they're amazing. And, uh, man, they, and they really have been I, I don't think we've worked with any vendor who's ever been so uh, responsive and supportive and everything. I mean, they're they're awesome. Mm -hmm. We really lucked out with the manufacturing, man. Not only are they just outside of where we live out, but they've been doing it for a long time. They have a great reputation, super accessible. You know, and honestly, when Rob, when I joined the company, Rob was already looking for a new manufacturer anyway. We ended up stumbling upon them. And it was perfect timing, the same sort of thing with the patent where we got the patent uh, with the pencil grip because they didn't want to re-up the pencil grip patent. It's the same sort of timing thing with our manufacturer. They were actually looking to kind of see what they could do in cannabis, if they could do anything in cannabis, what, right. what the possibilities were. It was the time when everybody was really starting to crank their minds as far as how they can get some of that ancillary money from you know cannabis since then obviously every industry has tried to do what they can to adopt a little bit of cannabis here and there and try to get those cannabis dollars but you know we were fortunate because our manufacturer was ready at the time man and it was yep. just timing wise timing. the universe brought us together man yep. yeah and shout out to our to the customers too i mean you know cannabis sometimes gets a bad rap but we have had nothing but great experiences it's been um, I mean, everybody has been really responsive. Um, they, um, they really seem to, um, to kind there's of get of, what we're talking about. Yeah. And there's a lot of productive stoners. People don't realize that. Like exactly people right. like, think they get the persona of, oh, he's a burnout. He's sitting on the couch eating potato chips all day. I used to smoke and go play basketball for six, seven hours a day. I mean, like <laughs> right? that's, you know, that's the type of shit I was doing when I was younger. You know, like everybody's that. been smoking weed. Everybody knows someone that's been using cannabis in a medicinal or recreational way for the majority of their lives. The, the thing that's going on now is that there's a normalization to be able to talk about. It. You don't have to be in the fucking yes. closet. You can sit there, talk to your homies, figure out because of this and because of my ailment, what could I do? You know, you have a chance to be able to get out and not throw up on each other and not have to be, you know, a designated driver, drunk person, you know, getting in fights yep. and shit. There, yep. you know, it's normalization of being able to talk and, and participate in it, you know, is, is something that I never knew was going to be, be a part of our generation, but it is. And we're fortunate. Right. So, well, yeah. luckily, I mean, I can't believe it's been what it's been 10 years. 2004 was when Colorado made it. Yeah. Yeah. January 1st. Or, sorry, 2004. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's yeah, dude, I was because... butt-tending at the time, man. There was, like, lines of people, dude, just like it was when it's broken in any other market, you know? And it's, it... like, miles and miles for months and months of people, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy, though, because it's it's taken this long for other states to really, like, get on board to see the type of money your guys' state's bringing in right off the rip. I mean, they're talking billions of dollars. But, like, New York, we've been, i say, maybe two, two and a half years now, three years, like, recreational. And it's funny, too, because you only know, like, the people you know. So you see the people smoking, growing up. It's the people you hung out with and other, you know, whatever. You never really seen, like, the the people's parents smoking or, you know, their younger brothers are now smoking or, or you know, doing edibles, whatever they're doing, cannabis. So, like, you go to the dispensary up here now, and I'm 40 years old, and sometimes I'm the youngest person in there. Yeah, And like some of these OGs will go in there and they're talking about, they know all the terpene things. They want this, they want this, they want this for sleep. They're talking about this level. I'm like, and I'm sitting there going, oh, okay, like where, where have you been for the past 20 years? <laughs> like, you know, right. But, but it's cool to see that it's just like getting normalized now. And it's like, even to with this, with the pitch pot and puff, it was 
a stretch. Like I was nervous about doing it because it's, you know, I didn't know certain people would judge me. I didn't really, I didn't do video for the first year, year and a half, but then, you know, I said, all right, now it's time. So I just started doing the video and it's becoming so, so much more acceptable. I really don't, don't care anymore. Like, but I did, there was a point in time I cared with my job care and all this stuff. And now it's just, who well, cares? We're really, it's, it's a, regular. we're really yeah. in a fortunate position as well, because we get to be kind of like the ambassadors between, you know, the old school hippies and all of the, you know, uh, stoner etiquette and, and cannabis rights that, you know, had been beaten into our heads from the, you know, the Woodstock generation and stuff. And now we, we get a chance to be able to kind of like teach and bridge along the way with, you know, the legalization and the commercialization and the corporation of, you know what I mean, of it all. So to be able to try to keep the, the rules intact in a way, you know, she's just yeah. she's just a plant. She's all natural. She's medicine. She deserves to be loved and treated right. You know, res- there's a level of respect. I remember one of the first articles I ever wrote for the industry uh, was for uh, uh, MJ Medicinals uh, uh, magazine back in the day. And it was all about the respect. There was a uh, there was a dispensary early on that used to hire girls in bikinis with a little sign with a pot leaf and an arrow that way. And they just stand on the corner and flap, you know, flash themselves basically just right. to try to get some cannabis in it. You know, lady cannabis doesn't deserve that. Doesn't need that. It's a medicine nope. that the, the miracles that I've seen her perform, you know, having been within her industry for 16 years now, you know, she deserves this level of respect that I think that the whole nation kind of could adopt and, and, you mm-hmm. know, adapt to, you know what I mean? Yep. Absolutely. That's, uh, it's good. It's good to see though. It's really good to see, especially like up here, how far it's come along in the past in such a short period of time. So your market is exciting. Your market is super exciting. It's funny. It's funny to see like how long it's getting to get, to get everything rolling out there. Cause you know, really all you're doing is getting rid of the pizza. Like you don't have to order pizza to get weed anymore, dog. You know right, what I mean? Right. You know what I mean? You right, can just yeah. go, go to the pop-up shop can be totally legit now. You know what I mean? Like, yep. It, you 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 had all the infrastructure in place, and now I think it's just been such a taboo out there that to be able to kind of get, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into making sure that it's properly, re- you know, regulated and, sure. and fair on all ends. You know what I mean? And like, uh, you know, that there, there's a lot of hours that you your market naturally has to go through in order to achieve certain levels of maturation in a way. You know what I mean? But yeah. It's surprising that New York isn't just, I mean, it wants to explode. You guys have been doing it for so long and you know, you're right. Oh, yeah. The thing I'm mostly excited about with New York is I think you guys are going to push the import export, uh, you know, part of the whole industry because it has to happen. Like you can't have New Jersey and New York and everybody operating separately out there. Y'all, y'all are just five. We're on top of each other. Yeah. Together, you know what I mean? Yeah. They have to. Eventually, it's going to be too hard not to. It's right, in Massachusetts, right. like everything. Like, I'm a stone's throw from Massachusetts. Maybe 25-minute drive, 30-minute drive to the border of Massachusetts. I can pop over a dispensary over there anytime I want. Right. Um, and so it's like they're going to have to figure something out. Yeah, you know, somehow just the growers and everything. stop at the bridge, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, what, that's, you know that's what crazy. What's, that's the, crazy. Uh, what's consumption like on the courses? Um. So... With it's it's funny because you always ha- noticed it out there, like mm-hmm. in it. It's <laughs> we everybody used to be like, oh, the bo- Rods and the boys are out there, but now it's different. Like I would, for example, I was playing uh, just the other day, and I went out. Uh, one of the guys I was going to play with bailed on me, and something come up. So I was still going. I was like, you know what? I got the day. I'm going to play, mm-hmm. and I got paired up with these two younger kids. They were probably maybe 21, just in college. And they, I could tell they wanted to smoke. Like I could tell, like I, you could tell these kids, they got the backwards hats. They're chilling. Like they're having a good time. They're yeah. challenging yeah. in, in, yeah. in England. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> we get to the third hole and I'm sitting there and I have a towel like this one here behind me, a black one. And it's, uh, it was folded over. So they couldn't see the, like the smoke and everything and the pitch button puff logo. And I get to the third hole. I hit my tee shot. I walk back to the cart and I fire up a joint. And this one kid looks at me and he goes, oh, thank God, man. <laughs> I go, what's up, dude? He goes, oh, dude, we were dying to smoke. We didn't know your vibe, dude. Like, I didn't have, like, the Dutch master hat on or anything like that. So I was like, I'm like, dude, you're good, man. He's like, oh, bro, it's going to be a long 18 holes, man, if I couldn't smoke out here. I'm like, bro, you're all good. I said, it shouldn't matter. Whoever you're with, fire one up, man. They don't like it. Go drive the cart on the other side of the cart path or whatever. Who gives a shit? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you right. see it a lot, though. I'm seeing it with older people as well, too, um, which is, is surprising. I see a lot of um, 
I see a lot of the older people I know though do the edibles or taking the low dosage gummies, um, taking the fives and the tens. Uh, that seems to be doing the trick. The flower is still like the, you see the younger guys, um, you see the joints. Some of the younger kids are coming out with the blunts and stuff still. I'm too old for that. I can't handle that no more. But there's it's uh, it's out there. It's definitely out there on the golf course for sure. It, it's good to hear. I know that the East Coast has been, you know, golf has been kind of something along with music that is kind of like part of the community in a way. I know yep. you had Shannon from Cannabis Golf League on, you know, yeah. a while back. She's a friend. She puts on some of the different golf events as well. You guys had a great conversation. You know? Yeah, she's cool. Good yeah, people. she's she's a friend and they're crushing it. And to be able to normalize different, you know, activities that everybody's kind of on the DL been doing anyway. But now you can kind of like go out and actually have fun. It's, it's cool to, and it's and it's important to be able to celebrate, you know, that normalization in those ways, you know. Yeah, we're. Uh, I'm hoping to do something with her next year. I'm thinking uh, late spring, early summer. Um, also, tie Rihanna into it um, with whatever she's doing because she's obviously plugged in with everybody. She hooked us up, oh Rihanna God. from yeah. from New Moon Cannabis. Um, yeah. she's working with Hempworth now. Uh, so. Like, I'm hoping to get something really going to where, like, I can tie everybody. I want to tie a lot of people in and really make it, like, a big event. But I want to plan it. I want to do it the right way. and Don't want to rush into it and try to do something, like, in the fall where it's a mess. I'd rather wait and do it, do it right. Get my all my ducks in a row, as they say. We're definitely in. All yeah, right, we cool. got to get all the yeah, golf people together, in. dude. There's enough people that have been, you know, in the cannabis industry that are now in golf or mm – -hmm. Or vice versa. We just got to get all you guys together and, and share a blunt, man. That's it. I have a course that in mind that I think would be uh, would be absolutely perfect for such a van. It's got a nice little setup where we could set up vendor tents. Like for like, I have a couple of clothing brands I work with. They could come out and set up a tent. You know, we could have like uh, different just at every hole have someone set up and bring out like you know one of the cannon things for a long drive thing. Like I have, I have some things in mind just to make it cool. I have one That'd of those. Uh, like, a, you know, like a huge, you got to take a huge bong rip and then spin around three times and tee off or something stupid, you know, just to do stupid things, change something different, something we don't have up here. That's the thing. It's we don't have it. So whatever I do is going to be the first time it's really up here kind of thing. So, you know, got to make it the, interesting. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, the pinnacle of all of the of the golf, pro, uh, you know, programs that I've been been able to be a part of with the charms because. Lots of the different states are doing it and stuff, but we actually were fortunate enough to be able to make some of the vape charms for Revenant, which is uh, Jim McMahon and Kyle Turley's uh, brand, uh, okay. cannabis brand. You know, you know Jim McMahon, Kyle yeah, Turley, yeah. And all yep. guys. So they did uh, last year. They did a, or was it? It might have been two years ago now when they when uh, Phoenix hosted the Super Bowl and they had like uh, all stars, dude. So yeah, like Eric Dickerson and like yeah. Warren Sapp and all these cats that Old rolled up, guys. and it was like NFL you know, Hall of Fame almost, like, just a golf event that everybody was also – well, and Jake Plummer was there, too, so there was a little bit okay. of medicinal mushrooms talk, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jake. What's the difference in the conversation, though? <laughs> <laughs> Jake Plummer, man. Yeah, dude. It's crazy, too, even with the athletes. Like, uh, college football, just – they're not testing for cannabis no more. They just nope. announced. So, that's huge. Like, just for recovery purposes, even, on the, on the medicinal side of it. You know, it's not just because they want to go smoke a blunt with their boys. Like, just the – my back's killing me. I'm sore. I can recover a little bit faster. Get to it's actually go to sleep. Yeah, to relax, you know. You know, Big I, difference. I used to talk on my podcast about all, all we ever needed was one professional sports group, whether it be MLB or NBA or NFL or anything, to jump on board to help the legalization. And honestly, ever since the NFL took the steps that they did, it's – it's led to, you know, leaps and bounds of progression, you know, with not only yeah. Jim McMahon, Kyle Turley's doing, Ricky Williams got his own brand, you know, yeah, got Ricky. All, yep. you know, Calvin Johnson's doing his Pac -Man own Pac-Man Jones, like, yeah. Got all yeah. these cats that are kind of starting to throw throw in their support. And, you know, the biggest reason for it is one of the reasons why the Oklahoma market is thriving right now is because these athletes would go and get hurt, you know, making their money, go and get hurt, and they get turned on to a pharmaceutical which yep. all it takes is this, and then all of a sudden you're popping some more, and you're popping some more, and you're popping some more, and then you're used to it, creates a habit, yep. instant habit, then you're, you know, opioid addicted or, or whatever the case may right. be. You know, and all of them are starting to realize, just see, just like when I was in the military, they would just throw down pills and pharmaceuticals, and, you know, that has its time and place. Being someone that's been fighting the green fight for, you know, 16 years, I've, 
I don't really do the pharmaceuticals unless I super need to, dude. My knee's been in pain for the last year. I'll throw some pharmaceuticals down. But guys like Ricky Williams, you know, they got kicked out and suspended because he wanted to manage right. his own pain without right. having to go that, you know, evil, yeah. evil powder route. He really, you know I mean? he really made a, you know, a big, big uh he opened the doors really from what he, he did. did. He was a he was a pioneer on the whole thing. Yeah, I've got yeah. a I've got a chance to be around Ricky probably three times now and have a decent conversation. Every time I do, I thank him. I don't even care what else comes out of my mouth, dude. Yeah. Like, thank you for fighting what you did, sacrificing what you did, and being the man, you know, going on the spiritual journey to be able to teach us, dude, because you're normalizing. Yeah. Like Absolutely. guys like that that are putting their neck on the line, man, like nothing but yeah. nothing but love, mad respect, dude. You know, that was my that was one of the best 30 for 30s, too. On uh, sure. ESPN, the Ricky Will Run, Ricky Run. Yep, yep, so, yep. You guys both said you golfed a little bit, so I'm going to wrap this up with three questions, but I'm going to mix it up a little bit. Right. Um, so what's your favorite club in your bag? Favorite golf club you got in the bag? You want mine? Yeah, whoever wants to go first. Yeah. Mine's a three iron, man. Mine's my three okay. iron. I'll tell you straight up because my drive is okay. Like, I can hang, but I'm not very good at driving. But my yep. three iron – regardless of power i can get you know i can get a real good chunk of of distance dude and 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 i for some reason i always hit that one straight i can't figure out how to slice it or hook hook my three iron dude my it, it just usually goes straight for the most part when i'm when i'm concentrating right <laughs> okay yeah right all right what about you rob man i don't i don't even i haven't even played enough what my putter is that a terrible answer <laughs> no that's a great answer <laughs> The putter, man, you could save a lot of strokes with the putter. That's, that's right. Sure. That's right. Fix a lot of mistakes. <laughs> yep. That's probably – my seven iron is probably my favorite – my favorite, like, iron or club I have to use. My putter would be right up there with my uh, with my favorite club. I'm very – I save a lot of strokes with, with my putter. Um, I actually had, like, my round the other day, last week for my league match, I had, like, four or five putts over, like, 12 to 15 feet that I was just – Burying it like no consistent, way. like downhill, like tough putts, like some of like a lot of undulations. So that they were moving a little bit, and it made uh, I made them. And I was like, Holy shit, this putter's. I went to my buddy, I was like, You want to hold it? He goes, Well, I go careful, it's hot. You might want to put the oven <laughs> in you know? so I can honestly say, I have no idea what it's like to have a hot putter, dude. Like, ever <laughs> in all the games I've ever played, all the rounds, never, never touch. once experienced a hot putter. Yeah, my my driver's a mess. If I could get my driver together, I'd be a really good golfer. But I can't get off the tee at all, at all. Um, and then, uh, if you, what's uh, your favorite strain you ever smoked? Go ahead, Rob. Chem dog. Okay, chem it was dog. A great, great one. Got turned on to it. Um, I forget. I even forget what I was there to get. And uh, man, that was so much fun. Chem dog. Yeah, that class, I love Kevin Dog. That's a good one. Yeah. I always put mine into my old bud tender uh, language, which is the 60-40 sativa dominant, just a little bit higher on the sativa side of things. It's this nice little pocket of strains, uh, like Sour Diesel, the Kem Dog that you mentioned, uh, uh, a head headband, like a flow, maybe even a, a, a nice train wreck, but right in there, they just that gassy, like, bite in mm -hmm. the tongue and, and like, feel you know get that body feel but also have that nice little heady that you want to go get shit done yep yeah i'm always a sour, sour diesel new, yeah. new york sour yeah. diesel man I always you can't some. deal with better than sour d man like my uh, first dispensary we would get an exclusive you know uh what did, what did rihanna call it legacy legacy yep. grower so yep. sour diesel on our shelves that you know somehow fit into metric and stuff man that shit would go for however much i wanted to charge for it whatever yep. Yep. Yeah, that shit was so good, man. Back in the day, it's gone now. I haven't seen it in years up here. Just gone, gone. Yeah, gone, they're gone. taking a lot of those land races and just you know hybriding them up and tried to you know rock star them out and put their name name tag on it and then it all you know fades away. It's unfortunate. Yeah, so fucked it all up. Can't wait to get more land race back someday somehow. So if there was uh, wrap this up, last question: If there was one uh, person you could smoke with, who would it be? Hmm. Alive or dead doesn't matter. Don't matter. Go I'd ahead. Say Rob. Ray Charles. Ray, Ray Charles, Charles. Okay. Nice. Right. I'd probably say Marley, dude. Okay. I've you know I've been to Jamaica. I've been to his museum. Like I've enjoyed his music. His kids are cool. Like, but to have like he was 
he was just a little bit ahead of my time and I never had the chance, you know what I mean, to yeah. even see him. So Yeah, I heard that I haven't seen it yet, but I heard that movie was awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was surprisingly well done. I, you know, the, uh, the actor I think kind of portrayed it well. You know, there's it's a really complicated story to tell, but you know, right? Oh yeah. So crazy. Uh, how about you? Yeah. Mine would be. Um, I'm a big basketball guy. I grew up as a basketball player my whole life, and uh, Jason Williams, White Chocolate, used to play Hell for like, yeah, the, the Sacramento Kings and the Miami yeah. Heat. That's my guy, and he uh, he's a golfer now. He's always on golfing, bunch of podcast shit. So that's my that's my dude. So it'd be him. That would some skills, though, dude. Like oh, dude. you know what I mean? Like that would be an unbelievable conversation, dude. I've just been... just the way he played. Like there was so much stuff that like I did in a similar way, or like I would even like the elbow pass when he did that. Yeah. I went. I had a little uh, spot down in my basement. I would just go and dribble and uh, bounce the ball off the wall. And I sat there for a good 20 minutes, half hour straight, just trying to get that coordination to it. And then I seen a video that he like explained how to do it. And it made so much more sense. And I, I did it once in a game and got my ass ripped off the court so fast. My coach was ready to kill me. <laughs> well, it wasn't successful. That's why he was pissed. <laughs> only we, my, we only up, my chocolate can pull that stuff off. Yeah, we were up like 25 points with like three minutes to go. So I said, ah, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> Jason a shot. Williams would be cool. He was the man. But, hey, guys, I really appreciate you guys jumping on. Um, I p- appreciate the samples. I know the boys were asking, you know, where did you get that? Where did you get that? So um, why don't you let everybody know where they can find you? Yeah, absolutely. We're at uh, twistedfoot.com or twisted.foot on Instagram. And, uh, yeah, we can't wait to uh, – thank you so much. Uh, I meant to say thank you so much for having us. Um, this has been a blast. Absolutely. Great. Great time. Great conversation as well. Appreciate you guys' time and make sure you guys go check them out at twistedfoot.com and talk to you soon. Later. See ya. Appreciate the boys jumping on. Rob and Chad from Twisted Foot. Uh, Really cool guys. Really knowledgeable about the industry as well as what they do. Um, These things are cool though. They got a bunch of different ones. Slide them right over your cartridge. They got the select magnet right to the cart as you see here. So check them out. And then you got the lighter. This one's got the yin yang on it. It goes right over your lighter. Use this as a ball marker. Pretty dope. So thanks for those guys for jumping on. Uh, also, I got to give a quick second, give a uh, shout out to our sponsors. We got 420 Bliss looking at 740 Who's a Road in Troy, New York, right up in the Walmart Plaza. Make sure you stop in there and check them out. Don't forget to check out the app just a little higher. When you're on there, make sure you are at the 420 Bliss location. Um, and let them know the Pitch Putt Puff Crew sent you. Trouble off the T, troubleoffthetea.com, promo code RGB for 15% off site wide. And then promo code Puff for buy one, get one free on the polos. And last but not least, we got golf for CBD.com. Use promo code PPP10 to save yourself 10% on gummies, topicals. They have the recovery cream, the performance cream, the performance spray. Make sure you go and check them out at golferscbd.com. Appreciate everybody tuning in, and we will talk soon later.